Hi, and welcome to Eye on the New Zealand Sky with John Drummond. Uh, this is number three for early May 2020, and tonight's a, a slightly special one for us. Um, and I run Gisborne Astro Tours, here's my website, gisborneastrotours.co.nz. So if you're in Gisborne, uh, come out and see the universe with us. Um, so I have a Masters of Science degree in Astronomy from Swinburne University. I'm a Fellow of the Royal Astronomical Society of New Zealand and also a media past president of that society. And I enjoy surfing Gizzy's great waves. Um, here's a photo of me out at Wainui, with, um, taken by Derek Fryer. So tonight's target is Comet Swan, also known as C slash 2020 F8. Um, so basically Comet Swan, there's an there's a observatory that orbits the sun and it's photographing the sun, monitoring space weather, the sun's weather so to speak. Uh, and in the fields, it can pick up comets. So you've got the sun blocked out, and it looks at the atmosphere around the sun. And now and again, you'll see a, 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 an object moving from frame to frame to frame. And this man here, Michael Matiazzo, in Australia, he the, he saw the comet moving over the frames, and he drew the world's attention to it. And sure enough, it was a comet. And so it's known as Comet Swan after the detector that detected it because um, it wasn't Michael's equipment that was being used to photograph it and detect it, so that's why it's called SWAN. Um, so Comet SWAN will be visible in New Zealand uh, to the naked eye until around about mid-May, and um, it's best to look at it with binoculars. Basically through binoculars you'll see it as a fuzzy little blob, a fuzzy ball, and who knows, as it gets brighter, hopefully in the next week or two, you might be able to see a little bit of a tail coming away from it too. At its closest approach when it's, it's uh, to the sun, when it's at what is called perihelion, when, when it's about, what, 64 million kilometres from the sun, um, it'll, it'll go basically there on the 27th of May, coming closest to the sun on the 27th of May, and after that it should, in theory, swing away from the sun and go into the northern hemisphere sky, and so we won't see it after around about, I don't know, about the 20th of, of May or thereabouts. So, um, so now's the best time to actually look at Comet Swan, and it's in the morning, so if you get up a just prior to what is called the start of ast astronomical twilight uh, at about 5.15 in the morning for the next week or two and scan the sky with binoculars you might be able to see Comet Swan. So uh, I'll, sh I'll show, a show this on this, this uh, PowerPoint video presentation later but this is basically Swan over the various nights, so it's the 2nd of May, 3rd of May, 4th of May, 5th and so on. And it's a wide angle view, uh, thanks to John Dunlop, uh, another Kiwi, who did this graphic using Stellarium. And for those who know, there's Jupiter, Saturn, Mars. So if you draw roughly a line coming down from there, probably around about two, two and a half times from between Jupiter and Mars, that's roughly the region where the comet is. Uh, for those who know the stars, over here is Achena, up here Altair, Formalhort, and so on. So it's in the eastern through to northeastern region of the sky, and the sun will be down here. So indeed, it is a morning object. So first, a little bit about comets. So comets are basically some of the oldest, most pristine objects in the solar system. They haven't been changed um, over time, and basically they're, they're a conglomeration of rock, gas, dust, and so on, which are very loosely held together by gravity. Uh, they have, people know them as dirty snowballs, that basically they're just a, a con loose conglomeration of materials. And here's some space probe photos of some comets, and you can see basically it's just a rocky rock pile, and here's some of the dust and, and gases and so on going through what is called sublimation, where the, uh, the, the, the solid frozen gases just pass straight into, um, from frozen to a, to a gas state, and that's giving 
this will basically end up as a tail down the track, possibly. Here's another photo, first photo ever from the uh, surface of a comet. This is Comet 67P, and you can see it's just a big rubble, po rubble pole. Normally comets are like 10, 20 kilometers or so in diameter. And here's another one, and you can see that sometimes as a comet comes closest to the sun, it starts jetting off material, and that's one of the jets erupting through cryogenics. And as it gets closer to the sun, um, the solar radiation excites a nucleus, and a cloud of material starts to envelop it, and this is known as the coma. And then as it even gets closer to the sun, solar wind starts blowing against that coma, and some of the material is blown off, the dust and the gas is blown off the comet, and this creates the tail that we see on some of the brighter comets. Um, so here's the parts of a comet. So there's the rocky nucleus. Um, it's around about 1 to 10, maybe bigger, 20 kilometers or so in diameter. Then you've got the coma. That it's like the, the, the atmosphere, the envelope of material, of gas and so on around the comet. And then the wind is, the sun is blowing with solar radiation, blowing material away from the coma and creating either the iron gas tail or the dusty tail. So, for, if you're looking at for comets, a naked eye comet is seen about once every uh, few years. Um, that should be there, years there. And a bright one, maybe once a decade. And a bright one is one where you walk outside and you see this big comet's tail and, and so on in the sky. Here's a photo I took from, of Comet McNaught back in 2007. And it was just, it was just amazing. Uh, the public went crazy with it. Everyone was trying to see it and so on. So um, that's what comets can look like. However, most comets are really small little fuzzballs seen through a telescope most of the time. So Comet Swan, as stated, it, it's just cut, starting to be visible to the naked eye now. Uh, and will be so until around about mid-May and then it starts heading towards the north for us in New Zealand starts heading out of our sky and going into the northern hemisphere. And uh, if you have a pair of binoculars and sweep the, the northeastern, east northeastern sky, not far from where the sun will be rising, you'll, you'll hopefully come across a bit of a fuzzball, maybe even see a, a tail, and that will be Comet Swan. And um, if you do want a pair of binoculars, I do recommend that you go to Astron's, um, the uh, telescope shop of the Auckland Astronomical Society, www.astrons.nz. They have a wide range of telescopes and binoculars to view it. And after the PowerPoint, I'll show some photos that I've been taking, taking out here at Possum Observatory near Gisborne of Comet Swan. So um, if you want some more information about the comet or, or to look at that star chart or get what is called the ephemerides, which is like the latitude, longitude position of the comet in the sky, visit the, the website of the Royal Astronomical Society of New Zealand, rasnz.org.nz. And just before we carry on, please, just a, just a word, if you've got security lights, please tilt them down so you don't lock, block out the stars and the comet. It will be really hard to see the comet through all this glare from the security light. So it's always best to point your security lights down like this. Not like that where a lot of light is going into the sky and we're losing the sky coming through the window and this person can't sleep because of the light. It's best to shine the, the security lights down so that it's on the ground where you need the light, not up in the sky. So if you have a security light that's shaped like that, angled like that I should say, tilt it down so it's horizontal to the ground and lighting up the ground. So what we'll do now is I'll show you some photos of Comet Swan and then um, show you that chart. Okay, so here's some photos of Comet Swan I've taken over the last few nights. Uh, here it is, um, and you can see the tail starting to appear, and here's the uh, head of the comet. And this is through a, a bigger, larger telescope. You can start seeing the structure in the, um, in the tail. Many streamers coming away from the tail of, of Comet Swan. Uh, this is an inverted view, just to try and bring out some of the detail in the streamers in, in this tail. 
Um, and this fuzzy blob is a coma that surrounds the nucleus of the comet. And here I've really stretched it just to bring out the fine detail. And just here it looked like a blob broke away from the comet and is moving away from it. And here's a wide angle uh, field view and it shows the comet's tail about 12 degrees long. So it's quite a long tail photographically. Uh, here's John Dunlop's picture. Um, if you want to, pause the video and then try and recognize some of these stars and get outside and, and try and see the comet rising in the morning between the east and the northeast. And here's the uh, latitude and longitude of the comet in the sky. Latitude basically there, longitude of the comet there. Uh, this is for more advanced people. So thank you. Thank you very much. Get out and check it out.